Amen. You may be seated. Turn to Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. If we have any kids, you're welcome to go back to our kids' time. And are you glad to be here today? Say amen. 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 There's some of you that haven't been here in a, in a long time, and I, I, I won't call you out, but um, I'm looking at you, and you know, uh, otherwise. Also, I could also show you what's not appropriate attire at church, but Larry, I'll just leave you right where you are today. Um, um, down with the bay. Last week was the Reds, so uh, green, green's down today. Uh, Lord Jesus. Uh, here you go. But Steelers need to win. Okay, Lord Jesus. <laughs> hey, are you glad to be here today? Say amen. Hey, I, I want to tell you that there is a paradox, if you will, which is a, um, it looks like one thing, but it's really another. When you, when you put things side by side, they just don't match. But in our world, there is a, a constant, if you will, scale. What's right, what's wrong? What's encouraging? What's discouraging? Y'all with me? What voices am I listening to? What voices should I not be listening to? That's why I believe as we begin this, this series, or we began it last week, but we begin with wisdom, we need to ask these questions of God. We, we need to seek His face. We need to listen to Him, and that's why I encourage you to read Proverbs every day. Today is Proverbs uh, chapter 12, where we're going to be, but it's the 14th day of January. It'd be a great day to begin your reading of Proverbs with Proverbs chapter 14. Read one every day. Think with me for just a few minutes about how desperately our world needs wisdom. How desperately you need wisdom, you think? Yeah, you know, whatever that is in your work. We're blessed, folks. We're blessed. We have in front of us, we have around us the ability to hear and see God who loves us most of all, more than anything else. And I want to tell you today, you're right in the place where God wants you today. He, he wants you to hear a message. Y'all don't need to meet this guy, but Matthew's sitting here in the middle. I just want to say, Matthew, thank you for serving here at church the last few months or the last few weeks. You've been a blessing to me. He's, yeah. Y'all can meet Matthew a little later. But we need to learn wisdom. And one way to do that is to spend time with people that, that are wiser than you. Think with me. Go the wrong direction. It may start with just a small choice or, or, or some kind of slip or one relationship, but the outcome or the consequences of that one small choice that may, it may be leading you deeper than you want to go in some hurtful ways and you didn't expect it, but there it happens. All right, go the other direction. You make a positive decision, a right decision. It may be a small decision. It may be a great big decision, but it brought blessing and, and new opportunity your way. The outcome is even more blessed and a blessing to you and others around you. And the consequences allows you to help others see that right choices lead to good consequences. So wrong choices, right choices. Proverbs is really a, a treasure chest, if you will. A treasure chest uh, of things that help us understand what is the mind of God or what is the truth that God wants us to, to have in our lives. Light and dark, right and wrong, wrong direction, right direction. What's going to help us be ready for the challenges that come tomorrow morning or next month or even next year or preparing us for eternity? The key it's Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. That's our key verse for this series, which says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Excuse me. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and discipline. That's why we look today at Proverbs chapter 12. It's, it's why we're going to build, if you will, a scale. Wisdom on one side, foolishness or wickedness on the other side. And, and we're going to see what, what levels out in our lives. When I ask you to, to be honest about where you're headed, Proverbs is one of those books, one of those places that we desperately need to go and often. I, I need the wisdom of God. Anybody else want to say that? I, I need the wisdom of God. His word, his ways are the height of life and of knowing that we're loved. I was listening to a message yesterday and just one of those incredible 
little pieces that, that came out to me and, and Irwin McManus preaching. He said, the best way for you to f be fulfilled is not to know things, but to know your love. We will be living our best life when we know we're loved. Y'all with me? Knowing that you're loved by God. So let's head that direction. Let's go on a journey uh, and let's see what God has for us. Proverbs chapter 12, stand with me as we honor God's word together. Proverbs chapter 12, we're going to read all 28 verses. Here we go. Here we go. Watch on the screen. Listen on or look at your, what you have in front of you, your Bible, your phone. To learn, you must love discipline. It's stupid to hate correction. The Lord approves of those who do good, but he condemns those who plan wickedness. You see, wickedness never brings stability, but the godly have deep roots. A, wise, a worthy wife is a, crown of, excuse me, is a crown to her husband, but a disgraceful woman is like cancer to his bones. The plans of the godly are just. The advice of the wicked is treacherous. The words of the wicked are like murderous ambush. The words of the godly save lives. The wicked die and disappear. But a family or the family of the godly stands firm. A sensible person wins admiration, but a warped mind is despised. Better to be ordinary, better be an ordinary person with a servant than to be self-important and have no food. The godly care for their animals, but the wicked are always cruel. A hard worker has plenty of food, but a person who chases fantasies has no sense. Thieves are jealous of others' loot, but the godly are well-rooted and bear their own fruit. The wicked are trapped by their own words, but the godly escape with trouble, or such trouble. Wise words bring many benefits, and hard work brings results or rewards. Fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. A fool is quick-tempered, but a wise person stays calm when insulted. An honest witness tells the truth. A false witness tells lies. Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Truthful words stand the test of time, but lives are soon, lies are soon exposed. Deceit fills hearts that are plotting evil. Joy fills hearts that are planning peace. No harm comes to the godly, but the wicked will have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who tell the truth. The wise don't make a show of their knowledge, but fools broadcast their foolishness. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Worry weighs a person down, but an encouraging word cheers a person up. The godly give good advice to their friends. The wicked lead them astray. Lazy people don't even cook the game they catch, but the diligent make use of everything they find. The way of the godly leads to life, and that path does not lead to death. Let's pray together, and I'm going to ask Doug Mosley. Will you voice our prayer for us, please? seated. I want you to notice the back and forth, the scale, the good and the bad, the wise and the foolish. In, in much of Proverbs, it's just like this. It has a point, a point to help us grow. How do we get stronger? How do we know what God says? If you trust God, you're going to want to know what he says and what he calls truth. Test the word to see if it's wise. Godly wisdom is this, James 3, 17 and 18. But the wisdom from above, from above is, first of all, pure. It's peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others. It's full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism, always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Peace, pure, loving, gentle, thinking of others, righteous, 
We, we don't have to, to question if it's right or want, wrong, wise or foolish. Just ask God or see what God says. It comes with, with confidence from a heart that has been warmed by or spent time with God. It is God himself who is fulfilling and, and filling his word. Listen to this. If it brings confidence, if something that's wise or something that happens to you brings confidence in your life, I want to tell you that nine times out of ten, really 99 times out of 100, it's from God. But if it brings chaos, if a situation or a word brings chaos into your life, 99,000 times out of 100, it's not from God. It's from the enemy. Confidence or chaos? I want to tell you, confidence comes from being wise. Chaos comes from being foolish. Which one are you? I need wisdom. Therefore, I challenge us to begin with wisdom this brand new year. Number one, point number one is this, the way of wisdom. What does it look like? And I'm just going to run all over this chapter for a few minutes and give you some thoughts. How's this way of wisdom happen? Learn to listen. What would your mama tell you? <laughs> you got two ears and one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. Anybody ever heard that before? Yeah, some of you have said it because you're a wise mama. I heard you, Tammy. <laughs> I need to know, learning to listen. Too many of us, I'm confessing, too many of us are listening so that we can talk rather listening than we can understand. You want to have a tough marriage? Don't listen. You see, the wisest person I know, she's not here, okay, but is Julie. She's, Ruth called yesterday and said, will you please come see me? I don't feel good. And Julie said, I'll be right there. Three and a half hours later, she was in Ruth's living room. Uh, I, one of the wisest voices I know in all the world is my wife. Also one of the strangest people I know in the world. But l l learn to listen. to. We I said it out loud, I know. and I love you, darling. She's probably watching. Um, Psalm 78, verse number 1 says this. Oh, my people, listen to my instruction. Open your ears to what I am saying. Open your ears. Some of you need to go get the hearing checked. So, some of us need to just slow down that Psalms 46.10 and listen, be still and know. Why? Because we ain't been listening. In fact, I can look at your actions. I can listen to your words. I can even watch what you're drinking and eating and all of that. And I can tell who you're listening to. It ain't God. We need to be listening to others because others oftentimes can teach us some things. But here's what a fool does. They don't listen. They're stubborn. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt and everything to match. But I understand this, truth always wins, love always wins. Isn't that what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13? Love always wins. So first of all, learn to listen. How about this, use your words. Do you know words can be um, difficult? Have you noticed that? I, I remember in seventh grade, I, I went to a Christian school a lot, a lot of my life, but um, sometimes Christians don't act like Christians. Okay. I, I said something to um, somebody I shouldn't have said something to, and, and um, he hit me. I, I'm, I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. But, but I, I remember a word said at the wrong time and the wrong word is going to hurt you. Sometimes it'll literally hurt you, but you know what? Oftentimes it's going to hurt your relationship. Oftentimes it's going to hurt your job, may even get you fired. But be careful with the words. And he says that in verse number 15. He tells us over and over again in this scripture some of the things. Fools think that their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. We need to be listening to each other. Use your words. Back up one verse. It says, wise words bring benefit and hard work brings reward. Why is that? Because we need to understand what God says to us. Too many of us are being trapped. Verse 13, the wicked are trapped by their own words, but the godly escape trouble. Why? Because they think before they listen or they think before they speak. We need to think about our words or choose our words wisely. Oftentimes a fool is trapping themselves because they're trying to trap others. The godly live and give freedom. The foolish cause trouble for themselves and other people. Maybe you need to ask this, is this word helping somebody else get free? Is, it, is this truth that I need to share with them? Or is this something that's going to make them hurt and, and fall and not look toward God? Think about your words. So choose to listen 
Understand what you share. Use your words wisely. Share truth. Verse number, verse number 17. An honest witness tells the truth. A false witness tells lies. What else about this? A good, listen to this. Some people make cutting remarks, verse 18, but the words of the wise bring healing. Are my words cutting and hurting or building up? Sometimes we need to speak the truth in love, and it's not always easy. But does it bring healing? Truth exposes truth. Lies don't always get covered up. They will be exposed. He says that in verse number 19. So we need to be listening, learning to listen. Use our word wisely. What's the way of wisdom? Here's another one. It builds everyone. Verse number 18, you can look at it. It builds everyone. 1 Corinthians 5, 11 says it this way. Encourage one another, build each other up, just as you're already doing. We need to find ways to build each other up. Find ways that build each other up and do it in the right way. We need to also choose with confidence. What gives you confidence in life? Just keep listening. I know I'm kind of all over the place today, but here's this. In verse number 13, he says, escape trouble. Do you know what's going to give you more confidence? Stay away from trouble. Some of you, when I say the word trouble, you're thinking of somebody, (laughs) right? John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's trouble, but Jesus comes to give life. Stay away from trouble. For some of you, trouble is a bar. For some of you, trouble is a ball game. For some of you, trouble is gambling. For some of you, trouble is um, spending time with that female or that male that takes you in the wrong direction. But They make you feel good sometimes, but it's still wrong. Listen, if that person's not building you up and bringing you closer to Jesus, you shouldn't be with that person. Should I say it again? Confidence comes to help you stay away from trouble, verse number 13. Do you know what else? Confidence comes to the godly because their family stands firm. Do you know why we dads, we grandpas, we uncles, we men ought to be godly? It's just so the people around us can stand firm because some of them are listening to us and we don't even know they're listening. They're watching our example, and we don't know they're watching. But if we'll live for Jesus, do you know what they'll do one day? Live for Jesus. We need to understand that our family will stand firm based upon our confidence. Confidence comes from the the heart. So pointed in what direction is our heart? Watch this. If you're pointed in the right direction, your heart's going to get more confident. Verse number 20, listen to this. It says, deceit fills the hearts that are plotting evil, but joy fills the hearts that are planning peace. Here's some thoughts here. Deceit fills and fuels the wrong heart. Joy fills and fuels the righteous heart. Joy or deception? Those that are planning peace. Listen. Use your words wisely. Build each other up. Live with confidence. Verse number 24, some of you need to hear this. Work hard. Some of you hardly work. I was telling a a friend about a conversation that our youth had about 10 years ago, 12 years ago here at church. I had my my friend Andy Steele Smith was here, and he was asking them what they wanted to be when they grow up. And this young one, young middle school boy, he said, well, my dad draws a check. I guess I just want to draw a check. Can I speak into that for a minute? Don't just draw a check. Learn a skill. Go to college. Go, go work hard, whether it's flipping burgers or planting trees or building a fence. Do it and do it well. Why? Because those that work hard, it will pay off. And not just in your bank account. In your life. In your heart. Don't, don't, don't answer out loud, but you need some money? I'm going to tell you how to get money. You ready? Go to work! Okay, okay, I'm done. Okay. I, I'm meddling a little bit there. But listen, in verse number 14, it says, if you work hard, there's a reward. And the reward may just be a paycheck. You know what else the, wor- the, you know what else the reward might be? It might be the boss saying, I've seen you do well, I'm going to give you a raise. You know what else it might be? It might be somebody slapping you because you're living for Jesus. You know what else it might be? It might be a neighbor or a friend who comes and says, I see that you're a Christian. Will you please pray for me because my marriage is in the... You understand? You and I have an opportunity. Hard work leads us to rewards. Also, listen to verse number 11. Hard work, a hard worker has plenty of food, but a person who chases fantasies has no sense. They're senseless. Be careful. Don't confuse fantasies with vision from God. 
There are people who are going to look at you and say, you is crazy. You know what? There are many people in the Bible who did the things that God wanted them to do, and they was crazy. Yet Noah, it hadn't rained, and he said it was going to rain, and he built a big old huge boat. Abraham packed up his family and left. Where are you going? I'm not sure. That's not real wise. Over and over again, there was a lady named Rahab. Rahab. She was a prostitute. Like, Come to Wednesday night Bible study and you'll learn all kinds of things. I think I taught a middle, a middle schooler this week what a prostitute is. Just come to Bible study. By the way, K.U. Whitlow is teaching Bible study Wednesday night. Y'all come support. Here's the deal. You and I have an opportunity to help others see that God will fuel and fill our vision as we listen to him. One way to do that is to work hard. Another one, live justly. What does it mean, justly? Well, in verse number 3, it says it like this. Wickedness never brings stability, but the godly have deep roots. Do you know what deep roots on a good tree is? It holds it tight. holds it strong. You and I need to have some deep roots. Micah 6, 8. No, O oh people, the Lord he has told you what is good. And what does he require of you? To do what's right. To love mercy and to walk humbly with God. To connect with him, connect with others, and connect to the world. How do we do that? By living right, by, by living, living just. You know what else it says, verse number 12? That you'll bear your own fruit. You won't have to keep begging others. Why? Because God's going to use his life through your life to bring fruit in your life. So number one, what's the way of wisdom? Learn to do things well. Number two is this. I want you to divide the difference. For some of us, I live by the seat of my pants a lot. As some of you understand that, I, I, I'm not a planner sometimes. But here's the deal. We need to plan. Because if we don't plan well, we'll end up going the wrong direction. You go by the house of the wrong person that you used to buy stuff at that house, you might end up buying stuff at that house. Y'all with me? Yeah. Lay down with dogs and get fleas. Play in the mud, and you're probably going to get muddy. By the way, I'm praying for snow tomorrow. Y'all can talk about it about me all you want. Okay. Praise the Lord. We need, okay. I, 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 divide the difference. Here's the deal. What is wise? <laughs> that preacher being foolish up there talking about that snow. I got you. Divide the wisdom from the foolishness. Divide the right from the wrong. Divide these things. Why? Because God tells us, here's the deal. Be a servant, not a slave. And the harder you work, the more with confidence you are, you will be a servant. Servant to God, a servant to others. Don't work hard. Don't save. You'll be a fool, and you'll always have your hand out looking for somebody else to take care of you. Galatians 5, 13, For you have been called to live in freedom, brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another. You're going to either be a slave or a servant. Your choice. How you look at God and what you look at, lovingly and longingly, you become like. We need a church community fellowship we need families yours and mine who choose the wisdom of god over the foolishness of this world the, the world says you need this this and this to look like you got your stuff together i'm gonna tell you all i gotta do <laughs> gotta be careful how i say that all i gotta do is trust god and live what do we need to do? We need to understand what a difference is between a servant and a slave and how we look at God makes a big difference. How about this? We've got to understand what truth and lies, how different they are. Again, 17, an honest witness tells truth. A false witness tells lies. Verse 19, truthful words stand the test of time, but lies, they get exposed. Why is that? Because you need to know, I need to know that our words ought to be truth. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 he will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. If you're already on the way and somebody says you're in the wrong way, stop, look, and listen. If you're already going the right way and you start to see deception, continue on, but listen. 
because there might be a wiser way. You may be on the good way, but there's a best way. Here's the deal. You may be on the wrong way, and here's an exit ramp to take you on to the right way. I need to listen to God. When I listen to His wisdom, I understand, or I get a better understanding of what's truth and what's lies. Let's keep going. How about the humble and the proud? You can look at people and understand some things about them. Verse 23, the wise don't make a show of their knowledge, but fools broadcast their foolishness. Anybody ever given their money to somebody they shouldn't have given their money to? <laughs> have you noticed, I'm going to digress for a second, that, that eating healthy costs more than eating wrong or eating wrong? That's just painful and wrong. But do you know what happens in the long run? It'll pay off. Because if you keep eating wrong, you're going to end up with high blood pressure or diabetes or a funeral. I, I just remind you, I, I, I choose to eat different, and I don't always eat different, but I choose to do it. If I didn't have Mexican food, I'd be skinny. I've never seen somebody mad and upset while eating chips and dipping cheese. You know, I, shh, here we go. Um, wh why am I going this direction? Because humility and pride says I don't need to worry about what I eat or drink or what I say and where I go. Wisdom says, before you put it in your mouth, Think. Wisdom says, before it comes out of your mouth, think. So where do we point to? In verse number 10, there's a huge verse that I don't want to miss today, but it says, the godly care for their animals. <laughs> I, I'm a dog person. We love our dogs. Okay, We have one now. We just lost one of our dogs, and uh, we need to pray. Um, you know, um, some of our family is actually having trouble with their issue, uh, their dogs. Um, we were in our Community 101 class, and one of our folks told us that they have cats. And I pray for you because I hate cats. So um, I'm just being honest. And, and then I did say, you know, I, I'm, we, we got a cat. It's hanging up stuffed and on the wall. No, we don't. But I don't like cats. Um, the godly take care of their animals. What does that say? saw a post the other day again i've talked about food now i'm talking about animals maybe i'm meddling but if you if it's 20 degrees or five degrees outside and you leave your dog outside without heat you ain't a good person we can talk more about that later but we'll call aspca or spca and take care of you later worry and encouragement what do you worry about we worry about all kinds of things, right? Proverbs, excuse me, Philippians 4, 6. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and then ask him for what he's done. I read to you that when we first started the announcement time today. Listen, what are we worried about? You see, we worry about all kinds of things. And some of the things we worry about, they don't, really meet, they don't we shouldn't worry about them, right? There are some things that continue to take our mind, and they're taking our mind in a direction that's killing our lives. What are you worried about? You know, one of the things we worry about is will what I said get me in trouble? Well, if you would have said the right thing in the first place, it'd be the right kind of trouble. <laughs> Let's go on, okay? Worry and encouragement. We need to think about that. Does the wisdom that I'm getting from others, the wisdom I'm getting from God, bring me to worry more or to be encouraged? Let's keep going. How about good advice and, and, and deceiving people? Which is it that you do for others? Verse number 26, the godly give good advice to their friends, but the wicked lead them astray. Here's the deal. When you're with people, ask, do they make me stronger or do they make me worse? Do they make me closer to God or pull me further away from Him? Are they leading me astray? Are their words treacherous? Or are their words saving and guiding and building? 
building and loving. We need to be around people who are building us up, telling us the truth, but building us up so that we become more and more like Jesus. Here's the deal. God is calling us, verse number 28, to understand what the difference is between life and death. I'm not talking about that death dying here, but I'm talking about in the afterlife, the abundant afterlife that Jesus wants to give us. And here's what happens. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whoever would believe in him won't perish but have everlasting life. Here's the deal. Are you going to have life or death? By the way, death talks about a place called hell. Say hell. Hell. Hell is really about death, but here's the deal. You keep dying and dying and dying and you never die. Life or death? Where are you headed? I ask you that question because I love you today. Are you going to help somebody and stop them from being run over by a car? I hope and pray you will. Do you tell somebody the truth so they don't go the wrong direction? Why? Because we love them. God loved us so much that he chose to give us the best, the best, his best. Proverbs 8.35, whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. You hold on to his wisdom and watch his favor continue to come your direction. My life verse is from James 1, verse number 5, but I'm going to give you 5 and 6. It says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he'll give it to you. And he will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Don't waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as settled or unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. That's what some people call wisdom. I'm going to do what I want, when I want, how I want, because I feel like I know what I need and where I'm going. But here's the deal. You're going one direction and then another direction and then another direction. Have you ever watched a race before? And some of those races, <coughs> like I watched this cool race the other day. It wasn't on ESPN. It was on... TikTok. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm confessing. And it was these little tiny turtles that were being released to go back into the ocean. There were like six or eight or ten of them there, and just a cute little turtle. Yeah, just cute. Okay. Those turtles that were going, and, but there's some of those turtles that were doing this, and then because they had walls, they, they're doing this and this, and then there were some that were, <laughs> you know, they were going straight. It's time to stop doing this and this and this, and start doing this. Can I remind you? There is a way that's wide that leads to destruction, but there's a way that's narrow that leads to life. The, the, the scripture, Proverbs, mostly says that man thinks he knows the right thing to do, but it's the end. The end is death. We need Jesus. I don't know about you, but I need the wisdom of God that leads me to treasure the things that Jesus gives us. So I want to tell you today, we need to know the way of wisdom. And one of the best ways to do that is to divide out wisdom and foolishness. But the third thing I want to tell you today is about a path and a progression that's in every one of our lives. In fact, I'm going to take you to another scripture. It's in Psalms chapter 1, verse number 1. Listen to this verse. It says, blessed is the man. Listen, blessed is the man. It's on the screen. Will you read it with me? That might be better. Here we go. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seed of scoffers. Leave the verse up there for a minute, Holden. Um, <clears throat> I want to tell you about a progression that's going to take you in a direction that you probably don't want to go. It's a progression, right? The first thing we often do is we're walking with the wrong people. Listening, but walking. The next thing we probably will do is we'll stop, stand, and listen. And the last thing we'll do is we'll end up sitting with them, playing cards with them, right? Eating with them. Because sin oftentimes looks okay, but it takes us further than we want to go. And then we give in just a little bit, and then it takes a little bit more. And then we give in just a little bit more, and it holds us longer than we wanted to be held why because we chose the wrong kind of wisdom when we know the ways of god the person of god and what he's all about here's what we're going to see we're going to see ourselves in that progression when we walk with the wrong people so so who defines what's wrong there's a question for you who is defining truth in your life god is always right 
I believe that. i got to have a foundation. My foundation is built upon the Word of God. And by the way, the Word of God is Jesus, and He also gives us a word to live by. Here we go. We need to stop walking with the wrong people. Second Chronicles 16, 11. Look to the Lord in His strength and seek His face. Here's the deal. We need to not only stop walking with those wrong people, we need to stop standing with the wrong people. Why? Because sometimes when you're standing with the wrong people, people will think you're with those people. Do you, do you understand that? As you watch the ball games today, there'll be one ball game, and everybody's supposed to be wearing white. It is the Cowboys game. That's Jesus' team, just to remind you of that. And everybody's supposed to be wearing white. But there's probably going to be one fool with a green shirt. <laughs> Have you noticed? There's always somebody that stands out. Don't stand out as the wrong person in the right crowd. And don't stand out as the right person, or do stand out as the right person in the wrong crowd. But let me tell you how to be stronger. Find some people that are doing the right thing, saying the right thing, and who love you, and stand with them. Because the longer you stand with people who are doing the wrong thing, the more you'll do the wrong thing. Am I making sense? And the last thing is sitting with the wrong people. When we sit with the wrong people, we'll end up getting whatever sickness they have, right? there. It's a path. It's a journey. Verse number 28, Proverbs chapter 12. The way of the godly leads to life. That path does not lead to death. We have an opportunity, gentlemen, ladies, to see our lives the way God sees us. And I want to remind you that God loves you. He hadn't left you so that you can go wherever you want to go and end up in the wrong. He's come and he said, I love you so much that I want to give you truth to stand on. Today, choose Jesus. Choose his truth and watch how it changes your life. Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for the truth of Scripture. We thank you for what stands out but oftentimes I, I, I just need to be reminded that what's standing out is not the right stuff because I'm listening to the wrong person or going with the wrong crowd or treasuring the wrong things. God, I want to pray for us as a church, for us as families, that we'll find ourselves listening more to you and less to the others so that our lives will be radically different. God, we need you. We need you. Today we confess that. And we pray it in Jesus' name.